welcome to my channel guys I'm so excited to give you the very first episode of Be Your Brand. Ooh, shiny new, shiny everything. I am so excited to share everything I know about branding. And today I wanted to focus on this question, which could have been phrased a little bit better because it sounds so freaking rude. <laughs> but today, episode number one, we are focusing on this. Who are you? and what are you doing in america see rude who came up with these questions goodness who are you and what are you doing in america you probably noticed from my very weird accent i am not american i'm not from here i'm originally from london the united kingdom and i moved to massachusetts which is where i am currently in 2019 i've been in and out of America for a very long time but I decided to settle down here basically my husband and I were swapping hometowns so we moved from London to Massachusetts and what I kind of called the village because anytime I try to introduce person A with person B and thinking that they'll make a really good connection they already know each other so I'm the new kid on the blog. Everyone seems to know each other except me. I don't know any of these people, but I'm reconnecting people from their past. And I came to Massachusetts because of love, swapping hometowns. And it's not the first time, guys. I've lived in four different continents um, in my past. And back in the UK, I was a diplomatic consultant. <laughs> what on earth does that mean, right? I did diplomatic training with the intention of becoming a diplomat for my government in the United Kingdom. Now don't even get me started on why I decided not to work for my government or any government to, to say the least. I decided to start my own business called Grassroot Diplomat, which is a diplomatic consultancy so that I can work with as many different governments, with as many different countries, with as many different representatives as possible. Again, having that outside perspective and kind of like looking from the in outside in rather than working for one individual entity. It's kind of like you working in corporate America, you know, you're stuck in this really rigid box with all of these rules and bureaucracies and not being able to work the way you want to. That's pretty much what I would have been stuck with if I decided to become a diplomat. And the diplomat brand is so, so important to me. It's such a rich part of everything I know, everything I do, the way I present myself, the way I put myself together, the way I talk, the way I think, all the strategies in my head. This is because of my diplomatic training. So it doesn't matter whether I was an official diplomat or not. Now imagine working on the personal brands of government officials and helping individuals become diplomats for their own country. That's what I did. I used to train these individuals, I used to give strategic advices, I used to help governments turn these like briefing papers and top level project information, rewrite it so that it filters down and when it gets to the average citizen, they understood exactly what the government was delivering and promising and putting together for them. So bridging the gap between the top of the food chain to everybody else filtering that information and as you can imagine that took a lot of work in terms of gathering all of that information being able to digest it and then be able to come up with a plan and that's exactly what I do for you now solopreneurs I listen to you I gather up all of the information that you tell me and then I put my knowledge into work and turn that into your brand story turn that into a service or a product that actually resonates with your target audience. And that's the skill set that I bring to the table right now as your very own, very boss mother, brand consultant or boss diplomat. So working with government though was incredibly difficult. I mean, think about it. You have all of that bureaucracy. You have all of that red tape. There's such little wiggle room in terms of creativity. On top of that, I'm working with people at the top of the food chain. Now think about ambassadors, think about um, government officials who work directly with the head of state. Those are the kind of people that I was having a one-to-one -one meeting with. 
and getting this meeting it, it, it's not easy guys it's not easy you have to have the credibility built in your reputation had to be untarnished um, you had to be someone that knew what they were doing in that field you needed a brand you know and I had all of that figured out as part of Brasswood Diplomat and I was able to break through those very big iron doors crack it open and walk right through it and think about it when you're working with a government official many people can only even if they're lucky they get 10 minutes with them I always got 60 minutes always and it's not usually with an entourage of their team. When you are shoving your team, your assistant, your public relations manager, your, I don't know, your like office manager into that meeting, to me, you're trying to hide something. Anytime when I give you a question, you are deflecting that question onto a member of your team and then say, this person is working on this case, they will have more information that they can share so that they give you the right information. I call total BS on that. You are hiding, you are not working on the things that you should be working and you are delegating it to other people and taking all of that credit. To me, that's a red flag. As a diplomatic consultant, I was able to walk through those embassy doors, no matter what country they belong to. And I used to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who I could not even address with their first or last name. It was your excellency or Madam Ambassador, or Mr. Ambassador, or whatever the title is, I had to use those titles unless they invited me to call them by their actual name. That was protocol. I had to work within those protocols. And as you can imagine, in diplomacy, you're talking to very experienced people, very experienced people who are years ahead of age. There's a huge generational age. And I don't think a lot of these old white men that I was talking to appreciated the fact that these little, young Asian woman would tell them what to do. But I did it because that was my job. So when I moved to the States, I'm not in Washington DC. I'm in Massachusetts, AKA the village, I'm sorry guys. And one thing I did notice was, wow, when I looked at the landscape of all the people that I was meeting and all the things that I was seeing, there are so many solopreneurs. Oh my God, this country is made up of small businesses, which is absolutely incredible. I decided to choose the name Boss Diplomat because diplomacy is such a huge part of my identity, it's such a huge part of my history and I wanted to ensure that it belonged to the same family as my original company Grassroot Diplomat. Boss Diplomat is an evolution of Grassroot Diplomat except I'm working with a completely different audience with a very specific niche now. Um, a very specific focus on what I'm addressing right here, which is personal branding for small businesses. And as a result of that, my color palettes for Boss Diplomat is exactly copy and paste the same as Grassroot Diplomat. And I did that intentionally because I needed it to feel like it was part of the same brand. If somebody was to look at Grassroot Diplomat and then Boss Diplomat, you'll know that, ooh, there's, there's, there's a bit of a you know parallel between the two right um yes the font's different and the the personality and the vibes of both of those brands are very very different it has to be right because i'm talking to a different audience but it belongs in the same family which is my family this is my business and this is what i do so if i decided i wanted to start another business it's going to come from the same family because that's how important it is to me and therefore it makes it very hard to copy because no one else can say that they've had the experience and the background that i have in diplomacy if somebody else was to call their business plumbing diplomat is like okay why are you calling it that Get into the root of it and then you'll see who's copying who. I wanted to start Be Your Brand because I have so much to share with you. Oh my God, I have tons of stories to share with you. I have tons of strategies, tips, tidbits, golden nuggets, whatever the word is. I want to share it all with you. So I have decided to create um, a video blog and a podcast with the same content so that you can soak up this information in whatever platform that you prefer taking in your content. I will be publishing these vlogs and podcasts twice a month. Please like, subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, 
and YouTube and I cannot wait to see you come up on my calendar because you are going you and I are going to work together mark my words we are going to work together I'm Tarleen and see you soon